The Cat in a Hat by Dr. Zeus The sun did not shine, it was too wet to play, so we sat in the house all that cold, cold, wet day. I sat there with Sally, we sat there we too, and I said, how I wish we had something to do. Too wet to go out and too cold to play ball, so we sat in the house, we did nothing at all. So all we could do was to sit, 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 sit. And we did not like it, not one little bit. <sighs> and then something went bump. <gasps> How that bump made us jump. We looked, then we saw him step on the mat. We looked, and we saw him. The cat in the hat. And he said to us, why do you sit here like that? I know it is wet and the sun is not sunny, but we can have a lot of good fun that is funny. I know some good games we could play, said the cat. I know some new tricks, said the cat in a hat. A lot of good tricks, I will show them to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Then Sally and I did not know what to say. Our mother was out of the house for the day. But the fish said, No, no! Make that cat go away! Tell the cat in a hat you do not want to play. He should not be here. He should not be about. He should not be here when your mother is out. Now, now, have no fear, have no fear, said the cat. My tricks are not bad, said the cat in the hat. Why, we can have lots of good fun if you wish with the game that I call Up, Up, Up with a fish. Put me down, said the fish. This is not fun at all. Put me down, said the fish. I do not wish to fall. Have no fear, said the cat. I will not let you fall. I will hold you up tight as I stand on a ball with a book on one hand and a cup on my hat. But that is not all I can do, said the cat. Look at me, look at me now, said the cat. With the cup and the cake on the top of my hat. I can hold up two tree books and I can hold up the fish and a little toy ship and some milk on a dish. And look, I can hop up and down on the ball, but that is not all, oh no, that is not all. Look at me, look at me, look at me now. It is fun to have fun, but you have to know how. I can hold up the cup, the milk and the cake. I can hold up these boots and a fish on a rake. I can hold a toy ship and a little toy man. And look, with my tail, I can hold a red fan. I can fan with the fan as I hop on a ball. But that is not all. Oh no, that is not all. That is when the cat said, then he fell on his head. He came down with a bump from up there on the ball. And Sally and I, we saw all the things fall. And our fish came down too, he fell into a pot. He said, do I like this? Oh no, I do not. This is not a good game, said our fish as he lit. No, I do not like it, not one little bit. Now look what you did, said the fish to the cat. Now look at this house, look at this, look at that. You sank onto a ship, sank it deep in the cake. You shook up a house and you bent on your rake. You should not be here when a mother is not. You get out of this house, said the fish in the pot. But I like to be here. Oh, I like it a lot, said the cat in a hat to the fish in the pot. I will not go away and do not wish to go. And so, said the cat in the hat. So, so, so. I will show you another good game that I know. And then he ran out, and then fast as a fox, the cat in the hat came back with the box. 
A big red wood box. It was shut with a hook. Now look at this trick, said the cat. Take a look. Then he got up on top with the tip of his hat. I call the game fun in a box, said the cat. In this box are two things I will show you now. You will take these two things, said the cat in a winter bow. I will pick up the hook. You will see something new. Two things. I call them thing one and thing two. <laughs> These things will not bite you. They just want to have fun. Then out of the box came thing two and thing one. And then they ran fast to us. They said, how do you do? Would you like to shake hands with thing one and thing two? And Sally and I did not know what to do, so we had to shake hands with Think One and Think Two. We shook their two hands, but the fish said, No, no, these two things should not be in this house. Make them go! They should not be here when your mother is not. Put them out, put them out, said the fish in the pot. Have no fear, little fish, said the cat in the hat. These things are good things. And he gave them a pat. They are tame, oh so tame. They come here to play. They will give you some fun on this wet, wet day. Now here is the game that they like, said the cat. They like to fly kites, said the cat in the hat. No, not in the house, said the fish in the pot. They should not fly kites in their house. They should not. Oh, these things they will bump. Oh, these things they will hit. Oh, don't do it like that. Not one little bit. Then Sally and I saw them run into the hall. We saw those two things bump the kites on the wall. Bump, thump, thump, bump down the wall in the hall. Think two and think one, they ran up. They ran down on a string of one kite. We saw Mother's new gown. Her gown with the dots that are pink, white and red. Then we saw one kite bump on the head of her bed. Then those things ran about with big bumps, jumps and kicks. And those hops and big thumps were all kinds of bad tricks. And I said, I do not like the way that they play. If mother could see this, oh, what would she say? Then our fish said, look, look. And our fish shook with fear. Your mother is on her way home. Do you hear? Oh, what will she do to us? What will she say? Oh, she will not like it to find us this way. said the fish. Do you hear? I saw your mother. Your mother is near. So as fast as you can, think of something to do. You will have to get rid of thing one and thing two. So fast as I could, I went after my net and I said with my net, I can get them, I bet. I bet with my net I can get these things yet. Then I let down my net and it came with a plop. And I had them at last. Those two things had to stop. Then I said to the cat, now you do as I say. You pack up those things and you take them away. Oh dear, said the cat, you did not like our game. Oh dear, what a shame, what a shame, what a shame. Then he shut up the things in the box with the hook and the cat went away with a sad kind of look. <laughs> that is good, said the fish. He has gone away. Yes, but your mother will come. She find this big mess. And this mess is so big and so deep and so tall. We cannot pick it up. There is no way at all. And then... Who is back in the house? Why the cat? I have no fear of this mess, said the cat in a hat.
and I will pick up all my playthings and so I will show you another good trick that I know. Then we saw him pick up all the things that were down. He picked up the cake and the rake and the gown. And the milk and the strings and the books and the dish and the fan and the cup and the ship and the fish. And he put them away. Then he said, that is that. And then he was gone with the tip of his hat. Then a mother came in and she said to us too, did you have fun? Tell me, what did you do? And Sally and I did not know what to say. Should we tell her the things that went on there that day? Should we tell her about it? Now what should we do? Well, what would you do if your mother asked you? The Cat in the Hat Comes Back by Dr. Zeus This was no time for play. This was no time for fun. This was no time for games. There was work to be done. All that deep, deep, deep snow, all that snow had to go. When her mother went down to the town for the day, she said, somebody has to clean all this away. Somebody, somebody has to, you see. Then she picked out two somebodies, Sally and me. Well, there we were. We were working like that and then who should come up but the cat in the hat? Oh, oh, Sally said. Don't you talk to that cat. The cat is a bad one, the cat in the hat. He plays lots of bad tricks. Don't you let him come near. You know what he did the last time he was here? Play tricks, laughed the cat. Oh my, my, no, no, no. I just want to go in, get to get out of the snow. Keep your mind on your work. You just stay there, you two. I will go in the house and find something to do. Then the cat went right in. He was up to no good, so I ran after as fast as I could. Do you know where I found him? You know where he was? He was eating cake in the tub. Yes, he was. The hot water was on and the cold water too. And I said to the cat, what a bad thing to do. But I like to eat cake in the tub, laughed the cat. You should try it sometime, laughed the cat as he sat. And then I got mad. This was no time for fun. I said, Cat, you get out. There is work to be done. I have no time for tricks. I must go back and dig. I can't have you in here eating cake like a pig. You get out of this house. We don't want you about. Then I shut off the water and let it run out. The water ran out and then I saw the ring, a ring in the tub and oh boy, what a thing, a big long pink cat ring. It looked like pink ink and I said, will this ever come off? I don't think. Have no fear of that ring, left the cat in the house. Boy, I can take cat rings off the tub just like that. Do you know how he did it? With mother's white dress. Now the tub was all clean, but her dress was a mess. Then Sally looked in. Sally saw the dress too, and Sally and I did not know what to do. 
should work in the snow, but that dress, what a spot! It may never come off, Sally said, it may not! But the cat laughed. <laughs> I'm gonna make the spot go. The way I take spots off a dress is just so. See here, left the cat. It is not hard at all. The thing that takes spots off the dress is a wall. And we saw the cat wipe the spot off the dress. Now the dress was all clean, but the wall was a mess. Oh, wall spots, he laughed. Let me tell you some news. To take spots off a wall, all I need is two shoes. Whose shoes did he use? I looked and I saw whose. And I said to the cat, this is very bad news. Now the spot is all over Dad's $10 shoes. But your dad will not know about that, said the cat. We'll never find out, left the cat in her hat. His ten dollar shoes will have no spots at all. I will rub them right off on this rug in the hall. But now we have rug spots, I yelled. What a day. Rug spots, what's next? Can you take them away? Don't ask me, he laughed. Why, you know I can. Then he picked up the rug and away the cat ran. I can clean up this rug spots before you count three. No spots are too hard for a cat like me. He ran into dad's bedroom and then the cat said, it is good that your dad has the right kind of bed. Then he shook the rug. Crack! Now the bed had the spot. And now I could say was, now what, cats? Now what? But the cat stood still. He looked right at the bed. This is not the right kind of bed, the cat said. To take spots off this bed will be hard, said the cat. I can't do it alone, said the cat in the hat. It's good I have someone to help me, he said, right here in my hat on the top of my head. It is good that I have him here with me today. He helps me a lot. This is little cat A. And then little cat A took his hat off his head. It is good I have someone to help me, he said. This is little cat B. I keep him about and when I need him, I let him come out. And then B said, I think we need little cat C. The spot is too much for A cat and me. But now I have no fear. We will clean it away, the three of us. Little Cat B, C and A. Come on, take it away, yelled Little Cat A. I will hit that old spot with a broom, do you see? It comes off the old bear, it goes on the TV. And then Little Cat B cleaned up the TV. He cleaned it with milk, put the spot in a pan, and then C flew it out of the house with a fan. But look where it went, I said, look where it blew. You blew all the mess out of the house, that is true. But now you made the snow spots, you can't let them stay. Let us think about that now, said C, B and A. With some little help we can do it, said Cat C, then pop on his head. We saw little Cat D, then pop, 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 little Cat's E, F and G. 
We will clean up that snow if it takes us all day. If it takes us all night, we will clean it away, said Little Cat's G F E D C B A. They ran out of the house, then we ran out too. Then Big Cat laughed. Now you see something new. My cats are all clever. My cats are good shots. My cats have good guns. They will kill all those spots. But this does not look very clever to me. Kill snow spots with pop guns. That is just could not fail. All this does make more spots. We yelled at the cat. Your cats are no good. Put them back in your hats. Take your little cats, G F E D C B A. Put them back in your hat, and you take them away. Oh no! Said the cat. All they need is more help. Help is all that they need. So keep still and don't yelp. Then little cat G took his hat off his head. I have little cat H here to help us. He said. Little cat H I T K L N M, but our work is too hard. We must have more of them. We need little cat N. We need O. We need P. We need little cat Q R S T U N V. Come on! Kill those spots. Kill the mess. The cats. And they jumped out in the snow. Long rakes and red bats. They put in pails and they made high pink hills, pink snowmen, pink snowballs, and little pink pills. Those are the things that they did, and they did them so hard. It was all one big spot now, all over the yard. The big cat stood there and he said, "This is good. This is what they should do." And I knew they would. With a little more help, all the work will be done. We need just one more cat, and I know just the one. Look close in my hand. I have little cat G on his head. A cat. W X Y and Z. Z is too small to see, so don't try. You cannot. Z is the cat who will clean up that spot. Now here is Z. You can't see, said the cat. I bet you can't guess what he has in his hat. He has something called a room. Room is so hard to get. We never saw anything like it. I bet. My room cleans up anything clean as can be. Then he yelled, "Take off your hats now, little cat Z. Take the room off your head. Make it clean up the snow. Hurry, you little cat. One, two, three, go!" And boom! It went boom. And oh boy, what a boom! Now don't ask me what boom is. I will never know. But boy, let me tell you, it does clean up snow. So you see, laughed the cat. Now your snow is all white. Now your work is all done. Now your house is all right. And do you know where my little cats are? Said the cat. That room blew my cat back in my hat. And so, if you ever have spots now and then, I will be very happy to come here again. With little cats A B C D E F G H I J K L M N and O P, 
and Q R S T and cut U and cut V and little cuts W X Y and Z. Green eggs and ham by Dr. Zeus. I am Sam. I am Sam. Sam I am. That's Sam I am. That's Sam I am. I do not like that Sam I am. Mm. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Would you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them Sam I am. Would you like them in a house? Would you like them with the mouse? I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with the mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a fox? Not in a box, not with a fox, not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Would you, could you, in a car? Eat them, eat them, here they are. I would not, could not, in a car. You may like them, you will see. You may like them in a tree. I would not, I could not in a tree, not in a car, you let me be. I do not like them in a box, I do not like them with a fox. I do not like them with a house, I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them Sam I am. Train, a train, a train, a train. Could you, would you, on a train? Not on a train, not in a tree, not in a car. Sam, let me be. I would not, could not, in a box. I would, could not, would not, with a fox. I will not eat them with a mouse. I will not eat them in a house. I will not eat them here or there. I will not eat them anywhere. I do not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Say, in the dark? Here, in the dark. Would you, could you, in the dark? I will not, could not, in the dark. Would you, could you, in the rain? I would not, could not, in the rain. Not in the dark, not on a train, not in a car, not in a tree. I do not like them sand, you see? Not in a house, not in a box, not with a mouse, not with a fox. I will not eat them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. You do not like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. Could you, would you, with a goat? I would not, could not with a goat. Would you, could you on a boat? I could not, would not on a boat. I will not, will not with a goat. I will not eat them in the rain. I will not eat them on a train. Not in the dark, not in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. 
I will not eat them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. You do not like them, so you say. Try them, try them, and you may. Try them and you may, I say. Sam, if you will let me be, I will try them, you will see. Mm. <coughs> say, I like green eggs and ham. I do, I like them, Sam I am. And I would eat them on a boat, and I would eat them with a goat. And I would eat them in the rain, and in the dark, and on the train, and in a car, and in a tree. They are so good, so good, you see. So I will eat them in a box, and I will eat them with a fox, and I will eat them in a house, and I will eat them with a mouse, and I will eat them here and there. Say, I will eat them anywhere. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you, thank you, Sam. I am Fox and Socks by Dr. Zeus. Take it slowly. This book is dangerous. Fox, socks, box, knocks. Knocks and box, fox and socks. Knocks on fox in socks and box. Socks on knocks and knocks in box. Fox in socks on box on knocks. Chicks with bricks come. Chicks with blocks come. Chicks with bricks and blocks and clocks come. Look sir, look sir, Mr. Knock sir. Let's do tricks with bricks and blocks sir. Let's do tricks with chicks and clocks sir. First, I'll make a quick trick brick stack. Then, I'll make a quick trick block stack. You can make a quick trick chick stack. You can make a quick trick clock stack. And, here's a new trick, Mr. Knox. Socks on chicks and chicks on fox. Fox on clocks on bricks and blocks. Bricks and blocks on knocks on box. Now we come to ticks and tocks, sir. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, sir. Clocks on fox, tick. Clocks on knocks, tock. Six sick bricks, tick. Six sick chicks, tock. Please, sir, I don't like this trick, sir. My tongue isn't quick or slick, sir. I get all those ticks and clocks, sir, mixed up with the chicks and tocks, sir. I can't do it, Mr. Fox, sir. I'm so sorry, Mr. Knox, sir. Here's an easy game to play. Here's an easy thing to say. New socks, two socks. Who sucks? Sue socks. Who sees who socks? Sue sees Sue socks. Who sees who Sue who's new socks, sir? You see Sue Sue Sue's new socks, sir. That's not easy, Mr. Fox, sir. Who comes? Crow comes. Slow Joe Crow comes. Who sues Crow's clothes? Sue sues Crow's clothes. Slow Joe Crow sues whose clothes? Sue's clothes. 
Sue sues socks on Fox and Socks now. Slow Joe Crow sues Knox in Box now. Sue sues Rose on Slow Joe Crow's clothes. Fox sues Hose on Slow Joe Crow's nose. Hose goes, Rose grows. Nose Hose goes some, Crow's Rose grows some. Mr. Fox, I hate this game, sir. This game makes my tongue quite lame, sir. Mr. Knox, sir, what a shame, sir. We'll find something new to do now. Here is lots of new blue goo now. New goo, blue goo. Gooey, gooey, blue goo. New goo, gluey, gluey. Gooey goo for chewy chewing. That's what that goo goose is doing. Do you choose to chew goo too, sir? If so, you sir. Choose to chew, sir, with the goo goose. Chew, sir. Do, sir. Mr. Fox, sir, I won't do it. I can't say it. I won't chew it. Very well, sir. Step this way. We'll find another game to play. Bim comes, Ben comes, Bim brings Ben broom. Ben brings Bim broom. Ben bends Bim broom, Bim bends Ben broom. Bim bends, Ben bends. Ben's bent broom breaks, Bim's bent broom breaks. Ben's band, Bim's band, big bands, Pig bands. Bim and Ben lead bands with rooms. Ben's band bangs and Bim's band booms. Pig band, boom band. Big band, broom band. My poor mouth can't say that, no sir. My poor mouth is much too slow, sir. Well then, bring your mouth this way. I'll find it something it can say. Luke Luck likes lakes. Luke Stuck likes lakes. Luke Luck licks lakes. Luke Stuck licks lakes. Duck takes licks in lakes Luke Luck likes. Luke Luck takes licks in lakes Duck likes. Blab such blibber blubber, my tongue isn't made of rubber. Mr. Knox now, come now, come now. You don't have to be so dumb now. Try to say this, Mr. Knox, please. Through free trees, trees, three free fleas flew. While these fleas flew, Freezy breeze blew. Freezy breeze made these three trees freeze. Breezy trees made these trees cheese freeze. That's what made these three freeze fleas sneeze. Stop it! Stop it! That's enough, sir! I can't say such silly stuff, sir! Very well then, Mr. Knox, sir. Let's have a little talk about Tweetle Beetles. What do you know about Tweetle Beetles? Well, when Tweetle Beetles fight, it's called a Tweetle Beetle battle. And when they battle in a puzzle, it's a Tweetle Beetle puzzle battle. And when Tweetle Beetles battle with paddles in a puzzle, they call it a Tweetle Beetle puzzle battle. And. When beetles battle beetles in a puzzle puzzle battle And a beetle battle puzzle is a puddle in a bottle They call this a tweetle beetle bottle puddle paddle battle muddle And When beetles fight these battles in a bottle with the paddles And the bottles on a poodle and the poodles eating noodles they call this a muddle puddle tweetle poodle beetle noodle bottle paddle battle and 
Now wait a minute, Mr. Sox Fox. When a fox is in a bottle, where the Tweetle Beetles battle with their paddles in a paddle on a noodle eating poodle. This is what they call a Tweetle Beetle Noodle Poodle Bottle Pad Muddle Daddled Fuddled Waddle Fox and Socks, sir. Fox and Socks, our game is done, sir. Thank you for a lot of fun, sir. Now is your tongue no. Nox by Dr. <laughs> Zeus. At the far end of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing except old crows is a street of a lifted Laura. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could. The foursome body lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax and why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old one sister lives here. Yeah. Ask him, he knows. You won't see the once there, don't knock at his door. He stays in his lurking on top of his store. He lurks in his lurking cold under the roof, where he makes his own clothes out of Miff Muffed Moof. And on special dank midnights in August he peeks out of the shutters and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. He'll tell you perhaps if you're willing to pay. At the end of a rope, he lets down to pale, and you have to toss in a fifteen cents and a nail, and the shell of a great, great, great grandfather snail. Then he pulls up the pail, makes a most careful count to see if you paid him the proper amount. Then he hides what you've paid him away in his snuff, his secret strange hole in his grovelous glove. Then he grunts. I will call you my whisper phone for the secrets I tell you or for your ears alone. Slap. Down slips the whisper phone into your ear and the old ones where whispers are not very clear since he have to come down through a snuggly hose and he sounds as if he had smallish bees up his nose. <laughs> now I'll tell you, says this teeth sounding grey, how the Lorax got lifted and taken away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back. Way back in the days when the grass was still green and the ponds were still wet and the clouds were still clean and the song of the swimming swans ran out in space one morning I came to this glorious place and first I saw the trees the truffula trees the bright coloured chuffs on the chuffula trees Mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze <laughs> And out of the trees that's the brown barbaloots Frisking about in their barbaloot suits As they played in the shade and ate truffula fruits from the ripulous pond came the comfortable sound of humming 
fish humming or splashing around. But those trees, those trees, those truffular trees. All my life, I'd be searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts were much softer than silk, and they had a sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping and joy in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my cart. I had no time at all. I built a small shop, then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. And with great skillful skills and of great speedy speed, I took the soft tuft and knitted a need. At the instant I'd finished, I heard a gazump. I looked. I saw something pop out of the stump of the tree I chopped down. It was sort of a man. Describe him. That's hard. I don't know if I can. He was shortish and oldish, and brown and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. Mister. He said with a sweet, dusty sneeze, "I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees. For the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs." <gasps> he was very upset, and he shouted and puffed, "What's that pain you've made out of my truffula tuft?" Look, Lorax," I said. "There's no cause for alarm. I chopped just one tree. I'm doing no harm. I'm being quite useful. This thing is a need. A need is find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat." But it has other uses. It is far beyond that. You can use it for a carpet, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers, for bicycle seats. The Lorax said, "So, you are crazy with greed. There is no one on earth who would buy that fool for need." But the very next minute. I proved he was wrong. For just that minute, a chap came along, and he thought that the thread had his knitting was great. He happily bought it for three ninety-eight. I laughed at the Lorax. Poor stupid guy! You can never tell what some people will buy. I repeat," cried the Lorax. "I speak for the trees. I'm busy," I told him. "Shut up, if you please." I rushed across the room, and in no time at all, I built a radio phone and I put it a quick call. I called my brothers, my uncles and aunts. I said, "Listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast. Take the road to North Nitch. Turn left at Weak Haven. Shop right up South Stitch." And in no time at all, in a factory I built. The whole Wunsler family was working full tilt. We were all knitting the needles, just as busy as bees, to the sound of the chopping of truffula trees. Then, oh baby, oh how my business did grow! Now chopping one tree at a time is too slow. So 
why I correctly invented my super axe hacker, which whacked up four truffula trees out one smacker. We were making the needs four times as fast as before. And that Lorax? He didn't show up anymore. But the next week he knocked on my new office door. He snapped. I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees. Would you seem like to be chopping as fast as you please? But I'm also in charge of the brown barbaloots who play in the shade in their barbaloot suits and they're happily lived eating truffula fruits. Now, thanks to your hacking to my trees to the ground, there's not enough truffula fruit to go round and my poor barbaloots are getting the crummies because they have gas and no food in their tummies. loved living here but I can't let them stay they'll have to find food and I hope that they may good luck boys he cried and he sent them away I the once love felt sad as I watched them all go but Mm, business is business and business must grow, regardless of crummies and tummies, you know. I mean no harm, I most truly did not, but I had to grow bigger. So bigger I got. I biggered my factory, I biggered my roads, I biggered my wagons, I biggered the loads. Of the needs I shipped out, I was shipping them forth to the south, to the east, to the west, to the north. I went right on on biggering, selling more for needs, and I biggered my money, which everyone needs. Then again, he came back. I was fixing some pipes when the old nuisance Lorax came back with more gripes. I am the Lorax. <coughs> he coughed and he whiffed. He sneezed and he snuffled. He snuggled, he sniffed. Once there, he cried with a crudulous croak. Once there, you're making such smug and smoke. My poor swan swan, <coughs> they can't sing a note. No one can sing who has smoke in his throat. <coughs> and so, said the Lorax, please, pardon my cough. They cannot live here, so I'm sending them off. Where will they go? I don't hopefully know. They might have to fly for a month or a year to escape from the smoke you've smogged up around here. What's more? snapped the Lorax. His dander was up. Let me say a few words about Gluppity Glup. The machine rotor is on day and night without stop, making Gluppity Glup and also Shloppity Shlop. And what do you do with this leftover you? I'll show you, you dirty old Wurzler man, you. You glumping the pond when the humming fish hummed. No more they hum, for their gills are all gummed. I'm sending them off. Oh, their future is dreary. They'll walk on their fins and woeful weary in search of some water that isn't so smeary. And then I got terribly mad. I got terribly mad. I yelled at the Lorax. Now listen here, Dad. All you do is yap, yap and say bad, 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 bad. 
Well, I have my rights, sir, and I am telling you, I intend to go on doing just what I do. And for your information, you Lorax, I'm figuring on bigger and biggering and biggering and biggering, turning more truffula trees into canoes, which everyone, everyone, everyone needs. <laughs> At that very moment, we heard a loud whack. From outside the fields came a sickening smack of an axe of a tree. Then we heard the tree fall, the very last truffula tree of them all. No more trees, no more thneeds, no more work to be done. So in no time, my uncles and aunts, everyone. All waved to me goodbye. They jumped into their cars and drove away under the smoke smuggled stars. Now all that was left near the bed smelling sky was my big empty factory, the Lorax and I. The Lorax said nothing, just gave me a glance. Just gave me a very sad, sad backward glance. And he's lifted himself by the seat of his pants. And I'll never forget the grim look on his face when he hissed himself and took leave of this place through a hole in the smog without leaving a trace. And all that the Lorax left here in this mess was a small pile of rocks with the word unless. Whatever that means, well, I just couldn't guess. That was long, long ago, but each day since that day, I've sat here and worried and worried away. Through the years while my buildings have fallen apart, I've worried about it with all of my heart. But now, said the Winsler, now that you're here, the word of the Lorax seems pretty clear. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So, catch, calls the once love. He lets something fall. It's a truffula seed. It's the last one of all. You're in charge of the last of the truffula seeds. And the truffula seeds are what everyone needs. Plant a new truffula, treat it with care, give it clean water and feed it fresh air. Grow a forest, protect it from axes that hack. Then the Lorax and all of his friends may come back. <laughs>